I'm reading from the NIV, uh, Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. Prophet Shaw, if you can adjust that seat for Bishop, if you don't mind. Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. We give honor to God for our bishop. Can you just say thank the Lord for our bishop? Amen. 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 Thank the Lord also for our first lady this morning. We appreciate Amen. the woman of God. The word of the Lord comes to us from Acts 3, verse number 1. It says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, mm -hmm. where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. Yes. But what I do have, uh -huh. I give to you. Uh -huh. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Uh -huh. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Yes. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. God. Mm -hmm. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Yes. Thus far the reading of the word of God. We do want to welcome our social media audience who's watching with us today. We appreciate all of you joining in with us here at the Kingdom Life Church. I want to share with you this morning from a simple thought. I don't want what I got before. Amen. Yes. I Somebody say, I don't want, I don't what, want what I got before. What I got before. It was the practice of the apostles, ladies and gentlemen, to go to prayer every day. They would go to prayer at 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. Let me start by saying, when it comes down to the changes that our nation needs, when it comes to the changes that we need, when it comes to the transformation that we need on the inside, if it's going to happen, it's going to take prayer. Yes, yes. Good God Almighty. If it's going to happen, it's going to take prayer. Uh -huh. And I find that one of the most uh, troublesome things that has happened among the body of Christ is as much power as we claim to have. One of the things, even though we claim to be powerful, we seem to be so prayerless. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good God Almighty. And we have weak prayer lives. When we do have prayer lives, we seem to have weak prayer lives. Come we on. don't know what it means to press in in prayer anymore. We don't know what it means to linger in prayer anymore. We'll go and we'll get in our cars and we'll pray our quick prayers. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for, enough, for life, health, and strength. We pray our quick prayers. Bless me. Bless my family. Bless those at my job. Bless those here. Bless those there. And we're done. But we don't know what it means to linger in prayer yes, anymore. Yes. One of the reasons why power seems to be missing in the body of Christ is because we have been so prayerless in our lives today uh -huh. as believers. Yes. Mm -hmm. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen by prayer. prayer. Yes. I'm speaking now and I'm making a declaration that it's time for the church to come back to the place called Prayer. Yes. It's time for us to come back to the place where we press into prayer. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Pressing in. My God. I remember the day when we would go into midnight prayer and we would literally pray all night. We didn't bring pillows to pray. That's, That's right. right. Come on Come now. on here. We didn't bring pillows to pray. Uh -huh. We didn't bring our blankets to pray. And if we did, we wrapped them around ourselves and we walked and we yes. prayed because we were hungry for the things of God. Lord, give us back a church ah. that will be hungry yes. for the things yes. of God again. Yes, yes. 
We become too consumed by the things of this world. The world has got, has garnered our mindset. We, we are so caught up in what the Kardashians are doing yes. that we we've, we've forgotten what the Holy Ghost is That's doing. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Lord, bring us back. Yeah, shape us back. Yeah, bring us God. back to the place where we hunger and thirst after yeah. righteousness. Yeah. The apostles prayed. If it's going to happen, yeah. it's going to happen mm -hmm. by prayer. Yes, yes. Uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, among the Jews, almsgiving or giving to the poor was considered an act that gained you religious merit. You were considered somebody wonderful if you gave a little something to somebody. It was it was your act of duty and service that made you more religious and more pious if you gave something to somebody. Giving to the poor was emphasized in the in the rabbinic tradition, and in Jewish writings such as the Tavit, you find that they emphasize giving to the poor. Now understand, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying that it's wrong to give to the poor. We should give to the poor. In fact, Jesus in the book of Matthew told us that the giving of alms to the poor is a part of what we should be doing. Yes. Uh -huh. We should be doing this. It's a part of our responsibility. So we should give to the poor. If your mindset isn't blessing the poor, something's wrong. Something's yes. wrong. Something. Yes. I yes. can't hear nobody talking. Something is wrong if your mindset isn't about giving. Watch this. Let me just touch this while I'm in here. You need to learn what it means to give up and give down. Yes. yes. Come on now. Yes. Talk long. We need to learn what it means to give up and give down. Uh -huh. What does that mean? Sometimes we look at people and we think that they've got more than us, Bishop. So what do they need? Why should I give to them? Sometimes we need to sow into people who have more than us. Come on. That's right. Come on. I'm, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it like this. Sometimes you need to sow into where you're going. Uh huh. Right. Come on yeah. now. God have yeah. mercy. You need to learn how to sow into where you're going, not just where you are right now. Yes. Sow into where you are going. So sow up and sow down. Now that doesn't mean you look down on people, but when I say sow down, that means people who are less fortunate. Less fortunate than what you may be. Less fortunate. So up, so down. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk. Because I don't want to talk about just the apostles today. Yes. Y'all hear me? Because uh -huh. a lot of times when we preach this text, we preach about the apostles. And how much power they had. And yes, saints of God, we need the power of God. Yes. But here is what really stands out to me today. This man. This man. The birds want to have church. Okay. Go ahead, tweet. <laughs> tweet on. <laughs> Look, the first tweet. Yes. <laughs> so, this man, watch this. He was lame, and the Bible is very specific about his condition, said he was lame from his birth. Yes. When you have been lame, mm -hmm. disabled, uh -huh. in some, for some period of time, in his case, it was from birth. Mm -hmm. Some of us, our disabling came in our childhood, preach yes. long. Yes. Some of our disabling came in places of our adulthood where we dealt with disappointments uh -huh. and letdowns and brokenness and people who were supposed to be there for us who walked away. Right. Somebody cheated on you or whatever may have happened and it broke you and put you in a place where you were lame. Uh -huh. yes. That's right, come on. God have mercy. And so what can happen, my God, I feel it right here. What can happen to us, ladies and gentlemen, is the dangerous thing is when you've been at the place where you're feeling lame, where you've been lame, you can get to the spot where you feel like you have no other option. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. That's shy. I feel somebody out here right now that in some area of your life, you feel like I have no other option. But I need to let you know today that you have another option. Good God Almighty. So watch now. If he was lame on both of his feet and you begin to feel like you have no option. Some of you, it's in your finances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
For some of you, it may be that you're on, you feel like you're on a dead end job. I'm just going to keep doing this job until I retire. And that's going to be it. I'm not going any higher. I'm not, things aren't going to get any better. They just are what they are. I need to prophesy to somebody and tell you, you're not stuck where you think you are. Yes. God has something better for your life. Amen. Yeah. God have mercy. Bishop, I feel like preaching this morning. Preaching. Hey, God. God has something. Look at, matter of fact, look around and tell somebody, God has something better for your life. God, God has something better, better for your life. Woo! You might not be able to see it. My God, you might yes. not be able to see it Come right on, now man. because of your condition, but I need to let you know that God's got something better yes. for your life. Yes. Now, the second thing I need you to identify is that the position of this man, the condition of him, Oh, he could only go so far. Because mm -hmm. <sighs> if you're lame on both of your feet, then that means either you got to be in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. you got to be on crutches. And, and back then they didn't have as much as we have today. Mm -hmm. So he was literally limited to how far he could go. At best, he was limited to perhaps a crawl. My God. Mm. Anybody out here in some area of your life, you feel like you've been out of crawl god on, have man. mercy felt like you can only go so, so far, far. Yeah, god yeah. have mercy ladies yeah. and gentlemen you can get in that place <laughs> where you feel like you've got to just crawl but yeah. listen even if all you can do is crawl yeah. stay mobile yeah. Yeah, keep, right. moving. keep moving, yes. keep oh, moving. God yeah. have mercy. God. Yeah. you got to keep moving it doesn't yes. matter yes. what's happening in your life you got to keep moving yes. you got to keep yes. moving because yes. yes. if you ever stop moving My your god. muscles are going to get uh, atrophied yeah. and you will no longer be able to yeah, move. So right. you got to keep moving. Whatever you have, use what you yes, got. Yes, yes. 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 Woo! Yes. My God. God have mercy. Thank God for giving me a trumpet. My God. Uh, could only go so far. The next thing I noticed now, you don't see it in the text that we read, but when you go back and do the background, it says he was over 40. Now, I think it's very interesting when the Bible begins to talk about numbers. You got to pay attention. That's what Pastor Mike teaches. He said, pay attention to the little details yeah, of the text. Yeah, that's right. And, that's and it right. said he was over 40 years old. 40 yeah. in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, is the number of testing. Yeah. 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 Yes. 40 yes. is the number of yes, trial. Yes. Uh -huh. 40 is the number of going through. How many years were they in the desert? 40. 40. Lord, how many days was Moses up in that mountain? 40 Lord. days and 40. Come on here. 40 is the number of testing. Yes. Uh, this man, the Bible said he was over 40. It was the age of validation. Listen, if you can handle, Lord, I feel it right there. If you can handle the trial, you can receive the validation. Yes, Amen. you can. Come on now. Because yes. at the age of 40, it was considered that your word was <laughs> solid and strong and that was worthy of validation, that if you said something, it was believable. Mm -hmm. yes. So now he was over 40. Uh, let me talk a little further about this man. Not only was he lame on both of his feet, not only did he possibly feel like he had no other option? Not only could he only go so far, but when you are lame on your feet, when you are disabled, somebody say disabled. Disabled. And I, now, now, I'm not just talking about physical disability. Sometimes the, 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 the disabling is in your emotion. Uh -huh. That's right. Come on have now. mercy. Yes. Sometimes it's in your emotions. Sometimes you've got spiritual sickness, God, yes. that has you debilitated and broken down yes. and struggling. Sometimes it can cover many areas when you're talking about being yes. disabled. But one thing that was so powerful, listen, here's the thing, pay attention, is when you are disabled like that, you have, you are at the mercy of other people. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Some people feel like they're at the mercy. We're almost done. We're at the mercy of a system. You feel like you're at the mercy of a system. You got to be at the mercy of a government system. Listen, baby, God's getting ready to shift some of us to a place. We're not going to be at the mercy of the government system. That's We're right. not going to be at the mercy. And that, listen, there's some folk that, 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 that tell you because of what you've been through, you need me. 
Yeah, yeah. that's right. I can't hear nobody talk. Yeah. You need me. You can't get by without me. Uh -huh. Because this man was lame on both of his feet, he had to have the Bible said he was carried day after day uh -huh. to the gate of beautiful to beg for all. He was carried. So he was at the mercy of everybody else. Well, I prophesy today in the name of Jesus. I break the chains of being uh, attached to yes. ungodly attachments. Yeah. I break the chains yeah. of being yeah. attached yeah. to yeah. things that don't need to be attached yeah. to you. Yeah. In the name of yeah. Jesus, yeah. you will no longer live at the mercy of anybody else but the grace of God. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Mm. My God. Notice this. The Bible says, I got to hurry. The Bible says he was lame on his feet and his ankles. Mm. His feet and his ankles. Everything else was working but his feet and his ankles. Now, in these moments, let me tell you what you don't need. You don't need another day of sympathy. That's right. That's right. Come on now. That's right. Come because what we tend to do uh -huh. is we tend to want sympathy That's when right. we're in our moments of struggle. Yes, we yes. tend to want people to have pity on us That's when right. we are in our moments of struggle. That's what right. you need is not sympathy. Right. You need a strategy. That's That's right. Right. Come on, yes. man. God. God. Our God is a God of strategy. Yes. So listen, somebody ought to lift your hand and say, God, give me a strategy. God, God, give, me a strategy. God give me a strategy. I don't want to be strategy. where I've been before. Yes. I don't want to do what I've done before. Uh -huh. I don't want to have what I've always My had. God. God, give me a strategy. Yes, Father. Yes. Mm. Here it is. We're almost there. Can, can you imagine what it feels like that your mind wants to, but your feet can't do. Yes, My God. yes. Mind wants to, mm -hmm. but you can't do. Mm -hmm. yes. Anybody? Yes. 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 Your mind wants to do some stuff, uh -huh. but it seemed like you just can't do it. That's There's right. always something trying to block you, something holding you up from, make, from it happening. Your mind wants to, but uh -huh. your feet can't, can't, can't do. do. My God. I know we're starting. We got to hurry. So listen, I got to close this thing now. So the Bible said they looked, he looked them, he looked them in the eye. Peter looked down at him. He looked back up at them. And the book said, he now says, I need y'all to help me. Uh -huh. He asked for help. He asked for some sympathy. He asked for them to give him alms. And Peter said, I don't have silver and gold with me right now. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that Peter was broke. He just didn't have it with him at the time. Mm -hmm. yes. But silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, uh -huh. yes. I'm going to give him yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Now, I can preach on the fact that the church needs to have the kind of power that we can help raise folk up. Uh -huh. But what I need to deal with right now, I'm closing now. God, I feel the anointing. What I need to tell you today is we don't need enablers anymore. That's right. Somebody say, God, deliver me from enablers. God, I, I don't want to be enabled yes. anymore. I yes. want to be empowered. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. yes. I want to be empowered, not yes. enabled. Yes. Don't, don't keep me in my weakness. Yes. Don't keep yes. me in my infirmity. My but connect, see, watch this. In the, in the times past, uh -huh. the people he had people connected to him who were enabling him yes. to go and get, beg for alms. But this connection, God, yes. if yes. they had to carry him. Come here, Daniel. Mm. If they had to carry him, they had to have a connection with uh -huh. him. Yes. To, come here, come here, T. Come here. Quick, quick, quick. I got to finish this. Uh, they had to carry him. Y'all got to hold me now. They had to carry him. It took a connection to carry him. But ladies and gentlemen, when God moves the enablers uh -huh, out of the uh -huh, way uh -huh. and sends you people that have real power, yeah, they want yeah. the new connection God is sending to your yeah. life. They're not going to enable you, but they're going to empower you. Yeah. They're going to put you in touch yeah. with power that yeah. you've not known yeah. before. Yeah. That's why you got to stay connected in the house of yeah. God. Because yeah. you need yeah. people yeah. who can help to empower you yeah. to your next place. Uh -huh. That can look yeah. at you where you are uh -huh. and say you're not staying here. Yeah. But in the name of Jesus, yeah. get up from yeah. there. Yes, yes, yes. yes. My God. Let me quit. In the name of Jesus, uh -huh. get, up. get up. But watch this. 
They didn't just tell him what to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> They connected with him. That's right. Yes. That's right. Y'all better hear what I said. Yes. I said they didn't just tell him what to do, yes. but they connected yes. with yes. him. Yes. In the yes. body of Christ, we need more connection. connection. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. My God. But watch. I'm done. We need not just connection, but we need trustworthy connection. Uh -huh. That's, uh -huh. right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We need yes. trustworthy connection. Yes. Yes, that yes. when you're down, uh -huh. they don't look at you yeah. and kick you while you're in the church right now. Yes, yes. oh. Can you imagine? Now, I could be off. I'm just using my imagination right uh -huh. now. And I'm not trying to stretch too far beyond the text. But I know how folks are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. Can Come I preach like now. I feel it? Yeah. Yeah. Preach like you feel it. <laughs> I know how folks are, Daniel. Uh -huh. If they've had to drive you somewhere uh -huh. long enough. Yeah. Am I talking here? You're talking. Yeah. Yeah. If they've had to fix you enough meals or bring you groceries enough. Come on, uh, no. Then behind, they'll help you. Uh -huh. They'll still do Come what on. they're going to do. Come but on. behind closed doors, yeah. they're not Talk talking about, about you That's like right. a dog. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Am I preaching right? You're yeah. preaching right. You must know. Woo! Yes, yes. I do. <laughs> My God. The folks, they'll help you. Uh-huh. But they do it on their own convenience. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They'll do it when they feel like helping you. Yeah, That's when right. they feel like it. And then if they feel like you're not progressing fast enough, uh -huh. they will drop you drop right you. where you are. Yeah. 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 Then you find yourself having to look for somebody else uh -huh. to carry you. That's yeah. right. God, have mercy. That's why, my God, I feel it here. That's why there's a lot of folk, Brother Daniel, who are who are in bad relationships right now. Uh -huh. Because somebody dropped them over Come here. On. And when they couldn't get carried over here, they found somebody else they yes. thought to carry them. Yes, 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 yes. God, have mercy. But I said, God, free me from enablers. Yes. Hey, God. My God. And when, uh oh, uh oh, I feel it here. Wait a minute, it gets good right here because now when they tell him get up, Peter reaches out uh -huh. and grabs him uh -huh. yes. and helps him up. Uh -huh. And the Bible said when the connection happened. Ah. Yeah, the connection. Come on now. Whoa. When the connection happened, when the connection happened, that's when the Bible says immediately his feet received strength. Yes. God, immediately his ankles received strength. Yes. Immediately when the connection happened, I don't want what I always had. Y'all yes. got to help me here. Uh -huh. I asked for alms before, uh -huh. but I don't want what I always had. Yeah. I want something greater. I want something more. Is there anybody yes. out here that says, I want something Something yes. more. Yes. Something yes. more. Yes, God. Uh, uh. My God. Now, when he gets his strength. Now, wait a minute. Can I talk right here for a moment? Uh -huh. There was a choice. Mm -hmm. See, can't miss the small details, preachers. Can't miss the small details in the text. Watch. Because when he asked for alms, he had his hand out for alms. Mm -hmm. But the Bible now says Peter reaches out and says, I don't have much. Yes. I don't have silver and gold on me today. Uh -huh. Now, by nature, have y'all ever been at the gas station and somebody asks you for some money? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. yeah. And you tell them, you don't have I don't have any. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the hand that was out, mm -hmm. I've had people cuss me out. Yeah, because you didn't have anything. Because I didn't have anything. I, don't, I tell them, I don't carry cash. I don't either. Yeah. So unfortunately, I really don't. I don't carry cash. Mm -hmm. So I'm not being funny. Right. Now, if they ask me for something to eat and I'm in a place to go buy, I'll go buy it mm -hmm. yeah. with my car. Right. But I don't carry cash. Don't now watch. But what they'll do sometimes is they'll pull their hand back after you tell them I don't have it uh -huh. and they'll cuss you out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or they'll say, oh, you call yourself a man of God. They don't even know whether you're a Christian or not. <laughs> and say, you call yourself a Christian. Call yourself a man. Listen, but here's my point. And this is what I want you to catch, small details. Here it is. He had a choice. When Peter said, I don't have silver and gold, he had a choice whether he was going to keep reaching. Uh-huh. Yes. Woo! When you can't give me what I think you're supposed to yeah. give me, uh -huh. now I got a choice. When somebody comes along, see, that's why people leave churches. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Am I talking right, Sister Cindy? Right. Folk will leave 
churches because in the moment that somebody is reaching out to connect with them and help empower them, they feel like, well, you're not giving me what I want, so I'm not staying at your church. That's right. Uh-oh. 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 Folks say they want, they, they, they feel like they're called to ministry. Preach long. Feel like they're called to ministry, Bishop. Mm-hmm. Mama, they feel like they're called to ministry. And they'll come and they'll sit with us as their leaders and say, I feel like I'm called to the ministry. And we'll say, okay, we're going to sit you down and train you. Mm-hmm. Come on. Amen. We say, you're going to sit for a while and get trained. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, gone. somebody else at another ministry said, baby, we'll use you over here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With no training. With no training. <laughs> My God. No training whatsoever. You getting up. And you just, you know, don't know how to preach. Don't know how to put two scriptures together. But now, because you are so desperate, to, you need to be in that. You need your ego enabled. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Shut up, Come you on. need your ego enabled. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Let me take it a little further. Or maybe you're already in ministry, but you, you, you're a minister right now with the tab collar. And now you, you're in a rush to get a band collar around your neck. And so you, when, they, when your pastor doesn't raise you up as fast as you, I'm talking to my social media audience right now. When your pastor doesn't raise you up as fast as you think you ought to be raised up, now you leave and go to another church where they tell you, yeah, I'll make you an overseer. All because you need your ego enabled. Mm. Mm. Uh-oh, priest long. You got a significant other, and they tell you, I need you to do better in your life. I need you to grow up and be a man. I need you to stop acting like a baby and be a woman. Now, all of a sudden, I had to put it a different way, but you heard me in the spirit. Now, now, you, you get mad with them because they're telling you you need to fix some stuff. Uh-huh. You're mad because they're telling you, hey, your attitude is bad. Mm-hmm. You think you run stuff. You need to fix all that trying to, trying to be bossy, ma'am. <laughs> but you say you want a husband. Come on. Preach on, preach. You say you want a husband, but you want to be bossy. Uh-huh. That ain't the way the thing goes. That's right. The Bible says submitting yourselves one unto another. another. Yes. Am I in the book? Yes. See, and brothers around here talking about, well, you know, I'm the head of the house and I run things and you're supposed to submit to me. Give us something to submit to. Amen. Come on now. That's right. Woo. That's right. That's right. Yes. Give her something to submit to. Rise up and be a man. I'm not talking about because you raise your voice and definitely not because you raise your hand. Yes. You better not be raising your hand because I'm calling the police myself. That's right. Hello. Amen. I sure will. Especially anything in kingdom life is going to be a problem. Okay. Go back to the go back to the anointing bishop. Go back to the anointing. <laughs> but my point is this. So what happens is you'll mess around because they say grow up, be a man, be a woman, and rather than stay there and grow up and be a man or a woman, or if you have to separate from them, sometimes separation is necessary. But if you got to separate from them, rather than you separating and being on your own so you can take the time to mature and grow Uh up, you go find somebody else to mess up their life all in an effort to enable your ego. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. You don't need enablers. That's right. And sometimes when you don't get what you want, mm-hmm. we draw back. Mm-hmm. But today, I'm talking to people. I need to know if your mindset is, I don't want what I've always had. That's right. Yes. I don't want what I've had before. I don't want it. I, don't want it. I want something better. That's right. I want something more. That's right. So when leadership tells me, I need you to grow up and be mature. That's right. When leadership speaks into your life and says, here, let me help you. Come on, be on time. Uh Uh When leadership gets on your case, Uh you don't get upset when leadership gets on you. That's right. That's right. That's right. I can't get it. See, that's the kind of churches we have now. Uh Don't get offended by leadership telling them what they've done wrong, and then they don't want, they they, they, got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my mama. But when you understand spiritual authority, come on now. You understand that we're not just telling you stuff just to be telling you. We're telling you for your growth. Yes, growth. Hello, somebody. Because, watch this. I'll give you an example. Bishop Wright taught me this. 
If you're always late, that's a character issue. Yes, yes, yes. that's right. Yes. If you're always late, that's a character issue. You need to fix it. Mm -hmm. Because if, watch this, if you've got character issues in your in your lateness, in your targets, there's probably some other character issues as well. That's right. That's right. Come on now. Or sooner or later, it's going to bleed into something else. Yes, yes, yes. And you don't want to be the person you've always been. See, sure. you know what the problem with a lot of people is? I'm closing, I promise, I am. But listen, you know what the problem with a lot of people is? They get to the point where they reach a certain age and they say, I've been this way for so long, this is just who I am now. Come on. <laughs> Not change. This is just who I am. I'm stuck in my ways now. You are, the, God, I hear you. You are the enemy of yourself yes, when you are yes, stuck yes, in your own yes, way. That's right. Yes. And can I help you with one more thing? Yeah. You're an enemy of your blessing when you are stuck in yes, your ways. Yes, yes, yes. yes. God, have mercy. God wants to pour into your life greater than you've ever experienced before, ever. Yes. But you cannot be stuck where you have been. That's right. I do not want my God what I've always had. I want more. I want more. See, we talk about the apostles, but today I wanted to talk about the man. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't need enablers anymore. Mm-hmm. Yes. I took the time, transparent moment. I took the time to go to counseling, professional counseling, to sit down and unravel some stuff in my life. Cause I don't want. Uh-huh. That's right. I, can, can, can Bishop talk? I don't want. Yes. What I've always had. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. I was talking to some people yesterday, and they said, we were talking about the fact my son is going through some medical battles right now, major medical battles. And they said, well, what you going to do? Are you running down? Are you going to get down there? Are you going to do this? I said, no, I'm not going to move right now. I don't know. I said, I don't know what. To, I don't know who this is for, but I hear the Holy Ghost. I hear him so plainly. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You sit still. God, have mercy. You sit still and you wait on God to speak. Yes, mm. yes. I told them yesterday, I said, I got to just sit still right now. I can't make a move. I said, because watch this, and this is going to help somebody right here. I know that because of everything that has happened over the last few weeks mm-hmm. in my life, mm-hmm. the first medical attack my son went under, literally a day or two before my aunt passed, then having to help with my family, getting things together for my aunt's home going. Then having to preach the home going myself. Then coming back home, trying to recover from that. And then a spiritual niece of mine passes away this week. And I loved that girl. She was a, one of the sweetest people you ever meet. Passed away unexpectedly this week. Then yesterday, while I'm preparing for some people to come to my house, I get a phone call saying my son's body came under attack again in a major way I'm fighting I know within myself that I am in an emotional place this is what I'm trying to get to right here I know that my emotions are here and there I know that they're held to skelter so I've learned and I'm going to help you right here don't make major decisions in times when your emotions are off that's right if you know your, you got to be able to identify that your emotions are off and not make major decisions when they are. Yes, yes. Saints of God, if you agree with me today, just declare, I don't want I don't, I don't what I've want. always had. What I've always had. I want something better. I want something better. I want more. I want more. God, deliver me from the enablers. God, God deliver me from the enablers. And connect me to people who will empower me. And connect me to people who will empower me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Lord just said something to me. He said, you can't be intimidated by people who are standing up higher than you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. good right there. People who are doing more than what you are doing, you can't be intimidated when they show up in your life. That's yes. right. Yes. Peter and John were walking. The man was lame. You got a business idea, and they got three businesses. Come on. And you're intimidated about coming and meet with them because you feel like you're less than. No, you're not less than. You're just in a position right now. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. But freedom is here. Yes. I don't God. want what I've always had. Father, bless your people. Thank you for your word. I pray, God, that it has blessed somebody's life and transformed somebody today in the name of Jesus. I pray that someone will be healed, delivered, and set free. 
Bless your people as we leave this place with never your presence. Take us to our respective destinations without the loss of one. Help us to obey the law because tickets are not in our budget. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone that agrees, shout amen. Amen. You can Hallelujah. Amen. Kingdom, thank you so much. I know that this was a bit different today. Where you start? Yeah, you might got to help me out. I don't know his face. So,